Welcome back to Tied Up in Sydney. My name is Jeff, and I'm going to be continuing along with this series today on how to how to tie a necktie and how to read the shorthand method. I'm going along the asymmetric necktie knots. Uh, today, I wanted to show you the four in hand, uh, but before I do that, I want to demonstrate one of the collars that has been quite popularly uh, being tied with today, which is what's known as a spread collar. So I'll come up close, and this is a spread collar, okay? It's quite wide, and it does not create that. Um, it doesn't create that normal um, V shape that you're used to. So what I've done is I've tied a Windsor knot on it. That way you can kind of see what your standard Windsor would look like on a spread collar. First thing that I'll say is that it it doesn't look bad, and if you're attending a rather formal event, it, it might actually make quite the statement because it is quite a large knot and it fills that space quite well. Okay but you're always gonna have this fabric feeding back inside your collar. Um, you're always going to have that no matter what necktie knot that you tie. So an asymmetric necktie knot, because it's not, your Windsor's not being complemented by that V, right? You have an equilateral triangle here and then you have something, a, a collar that is more asymmetric. So an asymmetric knot might actually suit that collar a little bit better. So I've gone ahead and I've put the steps down below here uh, on how to tie the asymmetric four in hand necktie knot. And you'll notice the first move is left into the diagram. What that means is your tail is going to be coming in, your blade will be going out. So left in, that means your starting position is going to be the seam side is facing in. The length, though, there's five moves in this particular knot, so you're not using, again, like the small knot of the oriental knot, you're not using a tremendous amount of fabric. So again, width of your width of your neck and the length of your tie is going to impact on the starting point. Uh, for me, it'll be just past my rib cage. Um, left into the diagram. Switches hands now. Right comes out of the diagram. Left comes in to the diagram. Center out. And then we're going to come through. Tighten it up just a bit. Pull that through. Tighten your tie. And then we'll bring the we'll bring this spread collar down. And there you have it. So you'll notice, again, because this the way the spread collar works, it's not creating a V-shape. So um, it's it, it's more suited to that asymmetric necktie, uh, necktie knot. It's going to sit right here across the front like this. And then you can, you're almost celebrating this fabric going back in underneath your collar um, by using a knot like this one, as opposed to a Windsor knot. Thanks again for tuning in to Tie It Up in Sydney. The forward hand necktie knot that I've just showed you how to tie today uh, works really well with these spread collars. And again, it's something that's being tied quite commonly. Uh, they are great for slightly less formal events, um, but I think that they also work in the boardroom. Uh, again, this is uh, something that you can wear almost anywhere. Uh, and again, the forward hand, the forward hand knot is going to be good with this type of a spread collar. Uh, and it's also good with that pointed color that I had on the on the oriental knot, the small the small knot video. Uh, again, they also work better with your uh, with your knit neckties as well. So if you have any knit ties, that four in hand is a great knot to tie. Thanks again for tuning in, though. You can click right down here so that you can subscribe. You won't miss out on anything. Right over here is this series, so you can see the shorthand model, how to read, how to tie a necktie, the different stop, the different steps. The 13 classical ways to tie a necktie are the, um, and then right up here, uh, you can click here if you want to see some more unique creations. These are my own creations uh, right up here.